All right, guys, I'm here at Box and Burn in Los Angeles. We're going over the four common mistakes that I see with mitt work. So the first one is getting too wide, not creating an accurate enough target. So if I'm taking the one, two, for example, how many times we see the mitts held like this is no good, right? Why is that not good? Well, number one, it's putting so much torque and strain on my elbows and my shoulders. If I'm catching power punches in this position through a one, two, right? My arms are away from my body, it's pulling them back. It's creating tension and torque in the elbows and wrists. That's going to beat you up over time. You're not going to be able to do more and more mitt work and build up your, uh, your sessions if you're taking that much impact. Number two, it's terrible for our boxers. As coaches, we're here to co coach good form and technique, make them better, right? So uh, I want to be catching that one, two right here, create the realistic target. If I'm holding it right here, they're, they're punching across, right? So I punch across. Across, across. It, it, they're not throwing accurate punches. The form is bad. I'm not doing my job as a coach. So how do we fix that? We, instead of getting too wide like this, we bring that target in. We almost want our mitts together, right? Because the one, two should be delivered straight down that line, straight down that pipe, right in the face right here in realistic boxing setting. So we want to keep those mitts as close as possible. So to create that accuracy and avoid getting too wide, always think about keeping the mitts pretty narrow and allowing your boxer to punch straight down that line. One, two. Right? Rather than st starting out here for the one, two, we want to start narrow. Now, if your boxer does start punching across and you feel them getting wide, bring it back in, cue them to throw down the line. So one, two, right? I'm catching it right down the line. If, this, if you feel yourself starting to get wide, check yourself, bring it in and cue your boxer to throw down the line. One, two, there. Now, an extra step up from that, you can hold the mitts like this in the same position, right? So I'm going to still uh, tell him to throw the one, two. As soon as the jab lands, I'm just going to simply pull that left mitt away, right mitt's right there for him, right? That's a way you can even develop that accuracy even more and make it even more realistic and more fight specific. So one, two, again, one, two, okay? So that's just a, a couple of examples of how you can avoid getting too wide. We want to keep the accuracy. Accuracy equals good form, right? So that's what we're trying to aim for with these coaching sessions. All right, so the second one that I see a lot is trying to be too complex and trying to do too many fancy compli complicated long combinations with lots of slips and catches and rolls and all this fancy stuff and doing 20 punch combinations when the, the, the boxer or the client hasn't even mastered the fundamentals and can even th start to throw a, f a solid jab or a one-two yet. So, so something like this, it's where it's just getting complicated for no reason because we think that that's what the boxer wants. One-two roll, slip. And it just ends up getting messy and slappy and I'm doing more work than the boxer and they don't fully understand what they're doing or they don't fully know what they're doing. So remember, we can get great sessions, we can get good calorie burns, we can have good fun sessions just with the fundamentals. Sometimes the one, the two and the hook and a couple of defensive moves is all you really need. So just keeping it nice and simple, jab, one, two, one, two, hook, jab, jab, one, two, good. He's getting good work in, the energy's good. He's throwing good straight punches, he's turning his hips. That's gonna be more beneficial in the long run than if I just make it all about me and how fancy can I get and do all this fancy shit and he doesn't understand what he's really doing, but I think it looks good, right? Now, is there a place for fancy mitt work and long, fancy, complicated combinations? Of course there is, but it takes time to get there. We've got to master those fundamentals and the basics and make sure our boxers are comfortable with that before we start to advance them. It's about advancing it slowly over time and getting uh, to the complex stuff when your boxers and your clients are ready to do it, all right? So don't try and do too much too soon. Keep it simple, less is more. All right guys, so before I get to number three, common mistake on the mitts, if you like these mitts and you wanna get a pair, the link's in the description, t-shirts as well, link's in the description, check that out. All right, so uh, common mistake number three is just doing too much work in general, right? And we wanna allow, we, the boxer should be doing the work. Again, less is more, so if I'm catching a one-two, I don't wanna be doing too much work, I just wanna hold my ground, little bit of movement, maybe a little bit of rotation, one-two, <coughs> one-two. Right? What I see with this is this instead. One, two. One, two. Right? I'm slapping my mitts into his gloves. I'm making his punches short. He's doing half the work. I'm doing double the work. It's the wrong way around, right? Let's switch that. Let him fully extend and work his arms and his body. Let me just catch those punches. Let the punches travel. That's the key. Let the punches travel. One, two. There, right? Not. Right? Not there, okay? Now, that's doing too much work with the mitts and the arms. Getting slappy. Right? We don't want to be slapping those mitts onto the gloves. I see a lot of coaches do too much uh, movement and too much work with their, their legs as well. So rather than the boxer doing the footwork, the coach will be doing the footwork. So I see this quite a lot. One, two. Dancing around the boxer. One, two. All right, good. Jab. 
jab, good. Moving around, moving around like this. Just dancing circles around the boxes. And, and I don't understand why coaches do that. I'm getting more of a workout than he is. He can just stand there and just follow me around and he doesn't have to do anything, right? So try and avoid that as well. Try and do too much work with the arms and moving around too much, getting too busy, blasting yourself, and then you, you've not got any, any, any energy left for your next session. So again, less is more. Your boxer needs to be doing the footwork, all right? So how do we do that? With me conserving energy and allowing my boxers to do footwork, it's as simple as taking little steps and just playing with the range, right? So this is one way, real basic, I like to just make him move the feet. And we're just gonna use the one-two. I'm gonna show you how I can do minimal work, but still get maximum work out of my boxer in terms of the footwork. So one-two. Take a simple step in, he's got to move, right? As soon as I start stepping away, he's got to step in. Now what I can do to increase that intensity is feinting him. So I step in, he steps back, I step away twice, right? Step in, step out, there. Now he's got to think, he's got to use his feet. So if we make that live, if I was doing it as a round on the mitt, one, two, ish, jab, ish, jab, ish, one, two, ish, one, two, ish, one, two, ish, jab, ish, good. So he's constantly got to be moving in and out of range. And all I'm really doing there is a couple of steps back, a couple of steps in and out, right? And another tip for this to make it even more efficient for you, you can simply just switch stance a couple of times and cover more ground with two steps. So one, two, and then just switch back. He's got to come in and switch back in. There. Just that one step with that front foot allows, makes him move his feet, right? One, two. And then. There. There. Yeah. So it's simple steps for me, but it's busier for him. He's got to be on those toes. So try to avoid dancing around your boxer, you doing all the work, let your boxer do the work. Let, make them move, right? And it's simple as just walking towards them and allowing them to judge the range. It's better for them to be judging the range, okay? All right, so common mistake number four, and I see this a lot. Before I get to it and show you what it is, you'll probably be surprised by it, but I uh, just want to remind you, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, then you're going to get notified of these new videos coming out each week, all right? Uh, we've touched on footwork. Common mistake number four is not doing enough footwork. How many times I see coaches online, on Instagram, wherever, just everything's in place and it's all just right here. It's just non-stop punches, 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 catches, all that stuff, but the feet are rooted, right? And we're negating, we're forgetting 50% of what boxing's all about and that's moving the feet, developing footwork. Not only is it good for developing your boxing skills, but if you're in boxing fitness and you're trying to put on good boxing fitness sessions, moving the feet is gonna amplify that calorie burn too. So just being stuck in the same spot like this is great, it develops the hand speed, the, the punch power, the defense, whatever you want, but let's not forget about the footwork, right? So always remember, add the footwork into your sessions. And as I touched on in the last point, we can do that by simply just moving our boxer around. All right, just come forward, move out. Throw a couple of punches in, one, two, come forward. Move around, pivot, come forward, move back, jab, move again. Good, ran, ran hook, one, two, pivot, good. See, I'm just allowing him to think about where he needs to be to land the punches. I'm not doing too much work, one, two, jab, right? So don't forget footwork. Common mistake number four, add footwork to every single round that you do on the mitts. I'm gonna challenge you that. The next time you do a mitt work session, add footwork in every single round. Make your boxes move, all right? They're gonna get maximum benefit out of it and they're gonna respect you more as a coach. They're gonna enjoy the sessions more. All right guys, so there you have it. Four common mistakes of mitt work. Next time you've got these on, keep these mistakes in the back of your mind. Try and avoid them, put them into practice. It's gonna make your sessions better. It's gonna make your boxes and your clients better as well. If you're punching the mitts, if you're on the boxing side, are your coaches making these mistakes? If they are, come on this video, leave a comment, let me know what mistakes they're making. All right, in the meantime, check out this video right here, five benefits of mitt work explained. Check it out, thanks for watching.